fun. Hey everyone, with my recent visit to Busch Gardens Williamsburg, I've now acquired pretty much all of the coaster credits at the park. So, I figured that it'd be a good time to rank them all. Before I start my list, I'd like to note that I wasn't able to get on Loch Ness because of the refurb and Tempesto because it closed early. These rankings are all based on my personal opinions and experiences, so here's how I rank the coasters of Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Starting with the number 8 spot, Grover's Alpine Express. I think it's pretty obvious why this is last. It serves as the park's kiddie coaster, and though I think it's a solid kid ride, it just doesn't appeal to me. I do appreciate how the layout isn't just a boring oval shape and that the helices actually have some force, but overall, it's still the smallest coaster in the park, so it gets last. At the number 7 spot is Invader. This family GCI wooden coaster has very good pacing, but lacks in airtime and positives. Invader is smooth for the most part, but it can get a bit shaky during some of the lateral moments. The best part of the ride for me is the enclosed drop, which is very fun in the back because my stomach always drops. The theming is minimal, but I really like how Invader blends into the Canada section of Bush Gardens, fitting in with the surrounding buildings and landscaping. Now for the number six spot, the park's newest roller coaster, Dark Coaster. And I think this ride is super cool how Intamin was able to fit a full coaster within the old Curse of Dark Castle building. As for the ride experience itself, I think it's a little repetitive. I know it's meant to be a family coaster, but the entire layout is just mostly turns that, for the most part, are forceless. There's one turn after the second launch that's intense, but overall that's it. Speaking of launches, I think the ones on Dark Coaster are surprisingly punchy. I think it's a combination of being indoors and having the lights off, but every time that first launch kicks in, it always catches me off guard. Theming, I think could have been executed a bit better, but the station and queue are done well. And taking spot number five is gonna be the first B&M coaster on the list, Apollo's Chariot. Opening in 1999, this is B&M's first ever hyper coaster, and I will have to say that it's not perfect. The ride is smooth, fast, and intense, but the airtime is very weak. And with the airtime being the main selling point of the coaster, I was a little disappointed. Some elements that I'd like to point out are the final drop and the helix turnaround. I was not expecting the turnaround to be as intense as it was, and you really start feeling the positives after a couple of seconds. Apollo's Chariot might not be the best hyper out there, but it still has an amazing setting and those world-class clamshell restraints. I think it's very enjoyable and re-rideable, so that's why it earns this spot. Now, this next coaster might upset some people, but my number four coaster in the park is Panth. Sorry, what I meant to say was Alpengeist. This ride is intense. Every element before the mid-course is stupidly intense, especially the Cobra roll. The one problem I have with Alpengeist is how hard the mid-course hits. Because the brakes nearly slow the train to a stop, the second half is underwhelming. I think it's fine, but it really, really hurts the ride's pacing. I think the theming is cool, and I only got a little headbanging on the final two inversions, so I'd say Alpengeist is pretty smooth. If the park would just turn the trims off, then this would probably be the second best in the park. But because they don't, this coaster sits at number four. My third favorite coaster at Busch Gardens Williamsburg is Verbolton. This multi-launch coaster made by Zira shocked me a lot. Verbolton is marketed as a family coaster, but the forces during the indoor section say otherwise. I think the launches are solid, and the atmosphere when you blast into the Black Forest is awesome. The uh, surprise is also very fun. The coaster is a bit shaky during some parts, but I found that sitting towards the back, it's smoother. This coaster is also the best theme in the park. The station and trains are both done very well, with the trains being my favorite out of any coaster I've ridden. Everything after the Rhine River drop is a bit underwhelming, but everything before is incredible. Now, in spot number two, I have Griffin, the massive 200-foot dive coaster. The reason I have this coaster so high is because Griffin is the only dive coaster I've ever done, so it's still unique to me. But as I ride more coasters and more dive coasters, this will probably drop in my rankings. Anyways, the drop on this thing is amazing. The original over-the-shoulder restraints allow you to get so much airtime, and both drops are a lot of fun. The Amelmans are floaty, and the airtime hill towards the end gives good airtime. Aside from a really cool front entrance sign, Griffin doesn't have much theming. 
One of my favorite things about Griffin is the trains and how they're 10 across. Looking at the track is also a spectacle because it's massive. Overall, Griffin is a really enjoyable ride and I could just ride it all day long. And my number one coaster in the park, with no surprise at all, is Pantheon. The one thing that Pantheon does better than any coaster at the park is variety. There's hang time, positives, laterals, and airtime, all while being smooth as butter. There are so many great elements that you could all argue as being the standout of the ride. The ejector during the swing launch is the best in the park, and the outer bank is great. The only problem I have with the layout is that I wish there were a couple more elements after the zero-g stall. The restraints on this coaster are also extremely open and comfortable. Everything about Pantheon is just good, and no other coaster in the park comes close to it. So that was how I ranked the coasters at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. If I were to guess where Tempesto and Loch Ness would end up, I'd guess for Tempesto to be behind Dark Coaster and for Loch Ness to be behind Apollo's Chariot. If you agree or disagree about any of my opinions, then I'd like to hear about it in the comments. I also have reviews for Pantheon and Verbolton on my channel already, linked in the description. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing for more theme park content. Thanks for watching to the end and have a good day.